Characteristics of the structural faults, uh, they are commonly steep, steep structures, um, don't have to be, but in most cases they are very steep ribbing structures. And they, um, there's not much vertical motions, mostly motion or slip will occur in the direction of strike. That would be very little um, dip slip component in some cases along the strike slip faults. But within a strike slip fault zone, uh, there are some other regions uh, that form as a result of uh, curved nature of strike slip segments. Within those regions, some of them are tensional, some of them are compressional. Or uh, within a strike slip fault zone, we can have those transtensional, transcompressional regions where you can find also normal faults and reverse faults, depending on the type of the uh, local tectonics around that region. Uh, but in general, along the strike slope fault, most of the motion slip will be in the horizontal plane, and there will be very limited or no vertical motions. Uh, these type of faults can accumulate more displacement than other faults because of that. Uh, these very long fault planes can also produce great earthquakes in terms of magnitude and um, damage. Uh, they can be longer than any other fault type. Usually, deep slope faults will form shorter fault segments. Over the time, those shorter fault segments can get linked, they can get connected and form a longer fault segment. Uh, but strike slip faults in nature, um, because of their nature and kinematics, they usually already form as much longer structures in the Earth's crust. These type of structures can form plate boundaries uh, between two tectonic plates. We can find strike slip faults. Uh, best, one of the best examples is St. Andreas Fault in the West Coast. So on the right side of St. Andreas Fault, you will be standing on North American plate. On the left side of the St. Andreas Fault, which is north-south, almost north-south striking structure, you will be on Pacific plate. So Pacific plate and North American plate pass each other along the St. Andreas Fault plate also. Um, and St. Andreas Fault zone is a right lateral strike slope fault. That means as North American plate moves down to the south, um, Pacific plate is moving to the north. These type of structures can transect the entire crust. Um, so you can imagine if, if you cut, cross cut entire crust, what's, what do we have under crust? We have um, higher temperature pressure conditions, first of all. And we may also have, at the base of crust, we may have some partial melt budgets. Those partial melts can uh, come along the strike slip faults. So these very steep, um, almost vertical structures can serve as conduits to melts. So some um, magmatism can be expected along the uh, strike slope faults because of that. And this type of structures can occur in all of the three tectonic regimes, not only in the strike slope region. That means you can find you can find strike slope faults all over the world, all over the earth in any tectonic setting. It's, it's whether con contractional or compressional or extensional um, or strike slip, transform boundary. Um, you will be able to find strike slip faults in any tectonic settings. Because uh, these uh, structures sometimes form to accommodate differential rates on Earth's crust during the formation. We'll explain that, what is differential rate means. Um, these type of structures usually have uh, really large great earthquakes. They can produce really great earthquakes uh, and these are repeat, repeat, they, these earthquakes usually repeat very regularly. So each uh, large scale strike of salt has um, a period, earthquake production period uh, and it is for some faults it can be 50 years so every 50 years, that single fault strength can produce maybe a magnet of seven earthquake. 
And <clears throat> in some other locations, it can be 100 years or, or even shorter or longer. So each uh, large scale structural fault um, is, um, can basically produce a really great, great, we call it great earthquake because of the magnitude, but usually those earthquakes are devastating. It gives a lot of damage to infrastructure. So these structural faults form when individual blocks uh, move at different rates or in opposing directions parallel to the surface. So if you open this up a little bit, um, in, for example, here on this slide, we have uh, a plate boundary separated by a ridge, mid-ocean ridge. So on each, each side of this mid-ocean ridge, this, um, we have ocean, ocean across. So as this mid-ocean ridge or spreading center produce more um, zero age alkaline basalts coming from deeper parts of the earth, this newly coming basalt, newly coming magma will push this two ocean of crust uh, sideways. As this two piece of ocean of crust being pushed apart uh, in divergent plate boundary, there will be some spreading rate for this mid ocean ridge. So every, it can be measured as sun, per sun, uh, centimeter per year or um, mid, you can make a measurement for median years. So that will be a rate of you know, spreading for each mid ocean ridge. So in some case, in some regions, uh, these mid ocean ridge segments can spread at different rates. So maybe this part is moving and um, spreading away at three, three millimeters per year. And on the other side, if you have, <clears throat> let's say, four or five millimeter per year rate, then this crust, Earth's crust at this location will be torn. It, it, it is basically these two differential rate will cause tearing effect. So this crust will be torn by this differential rates on each side. It's like pulling stretch film very hard on one end and softly on the other end. <clears throat> So you will see um, that stretch film will be this will torn in the middle uh, or closer to you know at one end uh, because of differential uh, amount of force application. So in this case, these uh, two dif different rates have they have this there should be a structure to accommodate these differential rates. This is just an example for spreading centers, mid ocean ridges, uh, for any differential rate. It can be differential convergence rate. Two plates, um, if two plates uh, converge and collide um, in a region, different plate fragments can collide at different rates, right? So between those uh, collision, collisional pieces, differential rates will be accommodated by structural faults. Here on this block diagram, we have different types of tectonic settings. Here we have a subduction zone, uh, and here we have a mid-ocean ridge, and um, we have <coughs> another subduction zone on the other side of the block diagram. Within all this um, tectonic regime, we have strikes the faults on this side of the block diagram because of um, as this slab subducts at some rate, maybe this subduction is faster. So this different convergence rates on each side will uh, will have to be uh, accommodated by strikes of faults in the region. So strikes of faults can be really magnificent. They can be really, really big scale, a couple of tens or hundreds of kilometers or miles in terms of length. And they can produce really big earthquakes, uh, like uh, examples from West Coast um, 1908 earthquake. It was basically it destroyed everything, almost everything in the West Coast. Um, and after 1908, there was other great earthquakes uh, in the West Coast. Another one is expected. Uh, it is actually overdue. The rocks are still under stress 
and there is stress and strain building up in the West Coast. And we don't know yet when these big earthquakes uh, producing fault will be ruptured. Basically. So this is that. This this is Stripesville fault. This white uh, white gray line in the middle of field photo uh, a photo taken from airplane. So this is the um, very famous uh, Mouse Creek in the Carrizo Plain, California. Uh, so you can see very, very well established drainage system uh, formed this uh, primitive creeks and canyons in the, in the region. So when you follow one strand of this river, you can go up to this white, white line. And after this white line on the other side, on the right side, you cannot follow the same creek on the other side. Because of the San Andreas fold going in this direction in the middle of photo, this creek is <clears throat> this it's displaced by San Andreas fold and shifted to the right on the other side. So if we stand here on this side of the block by block, you can observe the other block which is moving to the right. That makes this fold the right lateral strike some fold. This is one of the best examples of large scale, regional scale. Draxel fault, and it is also a transform fault because it is between two large, uh, two large uh, tectonic plates, so separate tectonic plates. Straxel fault is a fault again where the displacement vector is uh, horizontal or approximately horizontal, and hanging wall um, moves sideways relative to foot wall instead of up and down. So this is another satellite image from China. Uh, so you can see this each, you know, different color stripe represents different rock formations and different mythologies. So we can find a marker layer in this case. I believe we can use this red stripe here. That's one of the formations. And after this red, we have this alternating white and gray off color formations. And then we have another red layer on the other side. So this is the sequence. If you follow this uh, this order and look at the other side of this fracture on the surface, you will see all these lighter color stripes are shifted to the right. And here we have a piece of this red unit, red formation up here. Obviously, this part of the crust is shifted to the right with respect to the other block. So in this case, we have a right lateral Straxel fault or um, <clears throat> a dextral Straxel fault in this region. So we said uh, dips uh, for Straxel fault silicon lines will be horizontal or parallel to the surface of the earth. Uh, here we have two examples on the right hand side. You can see this is the surface of the Straxel fault. All the scratch marks on the surface are silicon lines. Uh, silicon lines are scratch marks left by another, by the other uh, moving fault, fault block. Um, so they are uh, horizontal. Here also we have an uh, epidote covered surface, fault surface, and all these horizontal lineaments are silicon lines, and they are horizontal or sub horizontal. We have two other examples here. So we have hundreds of uh, Strike slope shear zones and strike slope zones on this art group. And you can say it's like um, each individual block moves in one direction. So this side is moving to the left, and other side is moving to the right. All together, you know, right and left lateral faults uh, change the orientation of these white and black stripes in the art group. Now it looks, it looks like um, <coughs> it's changing. Um, maybe not the angle, but it's definitely changing um, location. So there's some translation. And this photo shows a farm uh, farm field, and you can see uh, these um, these channels are offset or displaced by San Andreas, um, San, uh, San Andreas Fall. And you can see, uh, this, is, this is not San Andreas, but this, uh, this is another structural fall. Uh, so if you look at this, surface rupture, that rupture at the surface defines the location of the fault plane. So from here, if you drill down in this direction, you can find uh, at some point, we can find uh, the fault plane itself. 
So fold plane is not exposed at the surface. We don't have a fold scarp. Instead, we have surface rupture, um, which is basically a fold trace line. So that's the um, linear expression of fold plane surface. And if you look at these different color stripes in the field, you can see this side looks like it's moving to the right, and this side is moving to the left. It's another example of right lateral or texture straxel folds. So displacement along uh, straxel folds, again, it can be left or right lateral straxel fold, and slicking lines will be horizontal. Um, so here you have some other examples of that. As a result of this motion, logs passing each other, um, mismatch lithologies across the fault zone is very common for straxel faults. What does this mean? Uh, when we have a straxel fault, these green lines basically show you um, straxel faults in cross-sectional view. So this is a, imagine this is a road cut. So on the road cut, you will have one type of rock in one fault block, and on the other side, you may not be able to find exactly the same type of rocks uh, because when two fault blocks, this is map view, this is cross section. So on the map view, as these two blocks pass each other along the strike of salt, these rock formations will be transported from their original uh, depositional environment or original environment, and they will be um, transported to another location. So other rocks that have not formed in that particular location will be also transported to this new location. So as a result of this, it's like conveyor belt, it's constantly moving in one direction and transporting luggages. It's similar to that. So this is one luggage, red luggage, and this is uh, a black luggage. So as this conveyor belt moves in the direction, different color material and different type of lithologies will be uh, right next to each other along the fault plane. So this mismatching lithologies, this is a very common feature of straxel faults. Normally when we have a dipsal fault, you, you can, depending on the scale, depending on the displacement, um, at some point, even with, uh, maybe with drilling, maybe with seismic, uh, you should be able to find the uh, same type of rock formation on each fault block unless it is fully eroded, fully done. So the um, so problem here is when you look at this you know, art group, this fault plane um, can basically bring Precambrian rocks, maybe with gold or oil, from further south to 100 miles north, where they are present for juxtaposed with miles and sedimentary units. So in this case, if these oil-bearing formations are transported, on the other side, uh, if rocks are impermeable, they can form a structural trap, and oil will be trapped along the stress of fault if conditions are good enough. Um, or other, other, other way, if you have a permeable layer on the other side, maybe because of this transportation of oil bearing formation from its original location to another location, all, all of the oil can also migrate and you can lose it. Or same with gold, maybe you will find a really good grade gold somewhere here. If you don't know about tectonics, if you don't know about this structural fault in your project area, you can assume that, oh, this is a good trend, it's going north-south in this direction. So I should be able to find this north-south gold trend all the way from here to this point. But if you do a detailed mapping and field analysis, you will see that there's this large-scale structural fault with uh, couple, maybe maybe tens of kilometers uh, offset displacement. So it will take this really good gold grade uh, mineralization trend from here to maybe 100 mile away. So you will not be able to find it. So that's why uh, strike circles can uh, basically require a lot of attention and uh, good detail uh, in the field work. In principle, most straps of faults fall in three cut categories, transfer faults, transform faults, and transcurrent faults. Transform faults are basically tear faults. They are little ones. Transform faults are really big, can be big, a uh, couple 
<coughs> a couple of tens of kilometers. Under ocean floor, and transcurrent faults are usual or or or, or form in continental crust. Um, so I'll show you examples of each and explain you why we why we why we, why we give different names to the same type of structure. Okay. So transform faults. Um, these are um, they form in fracture zones in on, in, the, um, in the ocean floor. Um, so in the ocean floor, as you know, we have um, mid ocean ridges, spreading centers. Uh, and it, as I give an example, these spreading centers can have different spreading rates or extension rates. So one side can be extending and spreading at three millimeters per year, and other side will be five. So this differential rate has to be accommodated by a structural fault. So in between these two, um, uh, spreading center is moving at different rates. There will be this uh, stressful fault form and accommodate differential spreading rates on each side. These type of faults form uh, basically uh, cross ocean ocean ridges. They uh, can have um, varying lengths. They can be um, short or long. If you check this ocean um, bottom image or map. Or bathymetric images, or those type of you know uh, geologic data coming from ocean floor, you can see each uh, individual transform fault has different length to different um, magnetic, different amount of deformation. So they are first explained by Tuzo Wilson, um, and uh, these type of uh, structures basically initiate the rifting or continental breakup then they can get longer and longer as, as a result of linkage uh, throughout the spreading history. Okay, so transform faults are a special type of uh, uh, structural faults uh, that uh, se separates uh, spreading centers in the bottom of the ocean. So here we have transfer displacement from one fold uh, or fracture to another. Uh, transfer faults are different than transform faults because these type of faults are connected to another type of fault on its side. So instead of spreading center, in this case we have maybe two normal faults that form uh, different amount of slip over a year or over million years. So one of the normal faults may have a slip rate of two millimeters per year, which means hanging wall block will move two millimeters relative to foot wall each year, every year. And on the other side, another normal fault can have much higher extension rates and it can maybe move at four millimeters per year. So similar to transform faults, this, this differential Extension rates this time has to be, has to be uh, accommodated by a structural fault. So this structural fault, uh, in this case, is called transfer fault. So these transfer faults can connect two extensional features or two compressional features. Instead of normal faults, you can have reverse or truss faults uh, with move it with different uh, slip rates. Then they will be connected with structural faults. So if, if you look at this um, field photo carefully, here we have a normal fault moving uh, in this direction. Another one is here. So as we move this side, this side of the normal fault much faster in this direction, and this side um, moves at different rate in this direction, this part of the rock will be basically uh, forming transfer faults or um, tear faults. Transcurrent faults are regional structs of faults uh, with one tip open. So one tip will not be connected to any other type of fault. Uh, so that way, these transcurrent faults can grow in that direction. Uh, so here we have the example, uh, same example from China. This is Pekin fault in, um, um, explained by uh, Sebastian Turner on the slide. Um, so when you, <clears throat> so this is how we explain it. 
Uh, there are no maps, mark paths, or signs. It's a four hour hike up Shepherd's Trails. There is a great point at the top of the pass into the next valley near the Piggy and Paul label in the top image, which is this one. Uh, so when he, uh, after four hours of hike uh, in the field, um, there were some evidence that he collected, but the most obvious evidence was after his, he completed his hike, he would be able to, he was able to see this, you know, different type of formations and color changes on each side of the fog plane. Uh, so um, on one side, uh, we have Cambrian age rocks, on the other side, we have Tawanian age rocks. So even uh, this age difference on each side shows, gives you some real sense of how much slip occurred along this fault plane. Also, this image has a scale. So this is two, two kilometers. Uh, if you find marker layers on this, uh, on this image, you can also um, use this uh, scale of two kilometers and measure it directly off the image. Um, so this red stripe may be connected to this one. This bluish you know, layers can be maybe extension of these. If that's the case, the difference between this point and this point, um, which is looks like more than more than four, maybe four and four and a half, uh, maybe five kilometers. So in if we zoom out uh, to this region, this is the first image, uh, location of the first image. So there are more of these uh, transparent folds in the region with one tip open and they can grow and connect to other structures. In Himalaya, example, transparent folds with free tips occur within the continental plates and um, that way, um, as this fault plane grows in one direction, these individual fault uh, blocks can extrude away from collision zone. As <clears throat> we, we know, you know, Himalaya, Himalaya, uh, Mount, Himalaya mountains form as the result of continental to continent collision between India and Eurasian plate. So as Indian plate moves northward and collide with Eurasian plate, uh, these Himalayan mountains form in the, within the collision zone. And as a result of this collision, it's a car collision. All these fragments are extruding, uh, moving uh, away uh, along this transcurrent phase. So as we, because, because of that, we call this extrusion uh, tectonics. Here we have an example, uh, which is uh, an analog model um, mimics Basically, all these you know, structures mimic exactly the same real-world examples in this experiment. So as this intruder is pushed uh, inside this uh, colored layers, uh, clay layers, uh, there are these um, strike circles form in the experiment and help this each individual fault blocks to escape from collision, collisional stress. This is an example um, also San Andreas Fault and related fault systems in California, Northern Mexico, and in the adjacent Pacific Ocean, as published by uh, Corwell at, uh, in 1987. Uh, so in this map, you can see um, uh, the San Andreas Fault on the you know, continent. Uh, this is main strand of San Andreas Fault. Um, it is almost north south in some places and then northwest southeast striking structure and it's a right lateral strike support which means this side is moving up in this direction to the north and this side which is north american plate moving south or southeast direction this is the main strand and you can see there are other little segments within this large uh, san andreas fault zone so fault zone means it's a wide, um, a, a really wide tectonic damage zone with similar type of uh, tectonic features. In this case, we have this main strand of San Andreas fault and other other smaller strassel fault segments 